Hey, it's Time Scarf 11 with part two of how I make my Lego Pokemon and custom minifigures. Today I'm going to be showing how I color them. So I'm just going to be using a single piece to show examples of different parts of the coloring process. I'm not going to be coloring in a full project today, like a whole Lego Pokemon, because that would take too long and be too difficult to do from the position I'm in to record this. But here's an example of Shaman. And Shaman without any coloring. So to start off with, I'll list all the tools I use and then show the process in action. First off, there is this. This is the stand I use for putting pieces on or coloring them. That way I can just hold them out and it's easier to do that way instead of holding it in my hand. Whiteout paint. I use this to put on a base coat of white over everything first before doing the actual coloring. This way everything starts out as the same color and the texture makes it a lot easier to put things on it, especially pencil, which if you put it on pieces without that first pencil, and it's gone. Then the next material is pencil, of course. Then there's a few different types of markers. For the bulk of the coloring, I use this set of ink markers. For lines, I'll use Sharpies. And then for really fine details, like for minifigure eyelashes, I'll use a Gundam marker because it's an even finer point than the ultra fine point Sharpie markers. And then also just for minifigures, I'll use scissors. I'll explain a bit more of that when I go into the coloring examples in a minute. Actually, I'll start with that. So when I'm making minifigure eyes, I can't get them on in the exact perfect shape. I'll just put on a square of paint on it instead of coloring in the whole piece. And then usually that square will not be the correct shape of an eye, which is supposed to be round. So I'll take scissors and scrape it around to make the correct eye shape. This here was from a failed attempt at another take of this video when I realized I did not have the space to actually draw on a full minifigure face because the camera is too close, my hand knocks into it, I don't have the space to actually do anything. Then for coloring pieces, what I'll do is take out this first and put on the base coat of every piece. The only exception to that is the aforementioned minifigure head where I will only put on squares of paint while keeping the base color of the head. Anything else, I just color in the entire piece. We'll paint over the entire piece first. Sometimes I just go over it a couple more times to make sure it goes on smoothly. It just takes like 10 seconds to dry, so I skipped over that. So then we have the plain white piece. As you can see, sometimes it gets on my fingers anyway. So let's draw an eye similar to Shaman's. And say there's a line for this Pokemon's mouth. I always start by putting on the lines with pencil first as a guide for where the coloring goes.
And then this is used mostly just for eyes. This is a white marker. I'll use this to go over the lower part of an eye just to give it more detail. So there's a lighter portion, portion of the eye. For the thicker lines, and then for eyes, I'll finish them off by putting some light in them. Some Pokemon don't have any light in their eyes, so I skip that part. But I always do this for minifigures, unless it's a character that also doesn't have any light in their eyes. And then, color in the rest of it with details for, let's say this is a mouth where it has a snout color that's different from the rest of the head. And if I ever make enough of a mistake that I need to just completely redo it, I'll also use the scissors for that and just scrape off all the paint that's put on and then put paint on over it again to restart if I really mess up on something. Also if I mess up when just doing the lining, the initial lining before any colors, I can always just fix that by using the eraser on a pencil. This pencil doesn't have much of an eraser left, but some of the other ones do. And then also, I'll go over lines again after coloring them in to thicken them if they kind of faded away from doing the colors. Like if I'm putting colors over the lines and not just under them. It's so like, for example, I was coloring in the entire head in this color and not just the mouth, then that's going to wipe away some of the lines and I would need to go over the lines again. So that's it for my coloring process for how I color all my LEGO Pokemon and figures. Everything done on this piece and for that mini figure head example is pretty much everything that applies to every piece that I work on. And then in a couple weeks I'll have part three where I go over how I make the detail parts like hair like this. And also here's an example of a actual finished mini figure face that has more detail on it. So if you watched the end, comment Blossom Dance down below, or let me know if you found this helpful. Since I've seen lots of people ask about how I color everything over the years, so see you next time.